Our sponsor for this Life Journey episode is Fitton Insurance Brokers Australia. The team at Fitton Insurance take great pride in their long-term associations which have been built over the years and maintained to the high level of personal care and attention their clients have become accustomed to. You can be confident Fitton Insurance works for you and so have your best interests at heart. Their insurance specialists strive to understand your business so you find the cover that's right for you. Fittens will look after everything for you from farm and agribusiness insurance, bloodstock, equine, livestock and business insurance. Give them a call on 1800 076 277 or find them at fitton.com.au. The Dolly's dream appears to gather momentum with each passing year. Do It For Dolly Day is the charity's special time to bring communities together to remember Dolly and the incredible legacy she left us with a legacy so capably managed by her beautiful family. The Everett's always amaze me with their strength, courage and love they send forth into the world. Here is what has become my annual catch up with Kate, Dolly's incredible mum. I hope you enjoy hearing from Kate this year. Kate, hello and thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it because I know how busy you've been. And we normally try to have a catch up before Dolly's Day, but this year that didn't happen because you were busy and I was busy. But I think this is going to be great because I'm so keen to hear about um, everything, you know, how it all plays out for you because I know you just don't sit at home and watch it all unfold. You're running around the countryside. So, um, but First of all, I want to start off with the message this year was starting the conversation. So could you tell me a little bit about that and how how we can do that better with our kids? Thank you very much for having me, firstly. Um, so this year, I guess this year's theme, um, how to have a conversation to end bullying, um, is the follow-up from Are Your Words Doing Damage, which was that wonderful clip that we played a couple of years ago and it was played a lot in the lead-up to this year. But how to have those conversations, it's it's not a one-off conversation. You know, it's it's being involved with your children every day. It's it's finding out the high points and the low points of their day and um and being really aware of what they're doing online or you know where their friend groups are at or are they changing. And so some of the things that we can do um you know, to start these difficult conversations is maybe asking about a friend, you know, how's Amy going with such and such or how's, you know, Dylan coping with this or and just really probably starting starting to find out what's going on in their world and quite often asking about a friend or in third person um, will will break through into a deeper conversation. That's just that's just one way. Um, you know, there's there's fabulous there's a there's some fabulous resources on our parent hub that we've had put together by our professionals on the team. So, you know, if anyone does want to take the time to have a look at those, jump on the website, follow the links to the parent hub, and scroll down, and they're right there. Um, Kate, I heard an interview that you did um, with Meg on Channel Seven on the Today sh- on the morning show uh, morning show, I think. Was yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And it was really interesting because what struck me is I realised that maybe some kids don't even know that they're being upsetting to other kids, like leaving kids out. Like, um, and you know, you talked about in during that interview how, you know, Amy would feel if someone wasn't speaking or or wasn't including her in you know, the group at lunchtime or whatever. And so could you just talk a bit, tell me a little bit about that and how kids can become more aware of their actions too? Yeah, and I guess, um, you know, um, and as parents we need to model that behaviour as well. But, you know, in those conversations ask, um, you know, is there someone being left out of a group chat? And and then and then delve into to the feeling behind that you know, to take away from it's a screen and there's no feeling in it and we just, you know, quickly said something and, oh, it doesn't matter. 
um, it does matter. It does matter to the person that is consistently left out or, you know, there's a group chat and then a side group chat and it, and it does matter to the person. So just really delving into the feeling, I guess, behind some of those, um, you know, what, what that other person might be feeling. Um, and, and then, and then talking about, you know, way, ways to navigate through that. Kate, um, I had to go to town yesterday because we had no food. <laughs> and um, so I, eventually I got in. But um, on the way in, I was listening to a, a Mamma Mia No Filter podcast with Lisa Curry. Yeah. And she was talking about her beautiful daughter, Jamie. And it was interesting because she said Jamie's problems started around about when she was 15 or 16 and she was um, a swimmer. And she hadn't been swimming long, but she was getting muscly, you know, and fit looking. Well, she was going to school and the kids were teasing her about her muscles. So she stopped. She stopped swimming, which is what she loved to do, but she stopped swimming because she couldn't handle the the bullying from the other yeah. kids. Yeah. And Lisa said, the same thing happened to me. But I, when I was that age, but I didn't take it personally. So the kids, some kids are able to get through that, aren't they? But some others really take it to heart. Absolutely. Do you see that? In- oh, absolutely. And and you know, it's a it's a great reminder that we can we can all go through a situation and not and not cope the same and not come out the same. Um, you know, you see this time and time again when you know, families go through things like we've gone through and, and you know, a marriage doesn't last or you, you fall out with, you know, a child or it, so it's it's just a reminder that not everybody copes with everything um, exactly the same way. You can go through the same experience and, and you don't process it the same way. And, um, you know, I, I guess I look back at my girls and, and think, you know, here's Dolly V the outgoing, you know, from the outside, the outgoing, the super friendly, the, you know, always barracking for someone else and being the cheerleader for everyone else and making sure everyone else is fine. And Meg's much more conservative and they just coped with that whole situation, you know, so much differently to one another. So it it, it is, it is it's so personal. I mean, it's it's like grief. Grief is so personal. There's no textbook. This is what you'll feel, and and I guess that's the same same with this. And we keep drawing back to that, you know, building empathy in our children so they can really understand and empathise that, you know, someone else might really take that to heart, and that particular conversation might be devastating to a, to a person, whereas someone else, it's water off a duck's back, and and they move on, and you know maybe move, drift out of a circle or something like that. So I think, um, yeah, I, I think that's probably a very important messaging that we we do have to remind ourselves and our, and our children, um, you know, to be empathetic to other views. Mm. Um, Kate, the other thing that struck me when I was listening to that interview is Jamie passed away when she was in her early 30s. So those kids that bullied her would be that age as well. Yeah. And if they heard that interview, how would they feel now knowing that they in some way contributed to what her life became? And our kids, you know, they, the bullies all grow up, don't they, and become adults. How, how do you think they feel in adulthood knowing how they affected somebody or what they did? It's such a hard question to answer. It's um, yeah. it's probably one I haven't let my mind go down. I guess um, you know, I guess we've had so many milestones in the in the last few years. You know, there should have been a graduation. There there should have been a formal. There should have been an eighteenth. You know, that we should have been applying for jobs. So I guess it's probably something that. I don't allow myself to think about, but mm. but yes, yeah. you know they they have to surely, surely as a human you have to look back and think that wasn't great. I was 
you know, mm-hmm. even if it was only drama to deflect from something you were going through and, and I deflected it onto the one person that, you know, was a cheerleader. Um, it's, you know, I guess, I guess the, the coping mechanism to that for, for myself and, and, you know, probably Tick as well is that these kids are going to grow up and, you know, they'll have children of their own. And hopefully if we do what we set out to do, we'll, we'll catch those kids that, that will inevitably need help. And, um, yeah. and we just keep focusing on the positive, but look, as a human, you'd have to look back and think, I probably didn't do that right. Mm. And hopefully, Kate, um, you know, in the tragedy that becomes of, you know, kids in uh, when they're bullied in however they lead their lives or whatever happens, hopefully those bullies will become better people. They'll learn from their mistakes. It's a hard lesson, isn't it? But um, it's hopefully it's not wasted you know oh it's yeah. look I, but this is it isn't it we you know we hope yeah. that our our efforts even if 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 what we do and and everything we've done in the last few weeks which is you know hugely emotionally draining and and you know it, it uses up a, we, we both you know we all have full-time jobs so this is an extra um but we just keep going as long as that starts one conversation and one family reaches out for help or one child says, geez, last week when I was doing this, that wasn't great. Or, you know, someone else goes, mum, I've been putting up with this for, you know, six months or three years and and it's got to stop. I need to change. You know, it's if it starts a conversation that saves someone else's life, then then that's what we're here for. Yeah, and makes um, starts the conversation that saves someone's life, but also stops that bullying to start with. Makes the bullies think about what they're doing and the impact that they're having. Absolutely, and hopefully um, it breaks that cycle. <laughs> yeah, Kate. I'm always amazed on from the outside looking in at all the support you've received um, all throughout the year, but particularly, I guess, in the lead up to Dolly's Dream. And there were some women that crossed the Simpson Desert. There was a man that um, I ran an ultra marathon. Yep. Um, there was a little girl that swam 14Ks. Like, are you just, it's, it's incredible, really. Like, how do you feel when you see people Doing so much for Dolly Street. I'm um, I'm honestly blown away every year. I, I I think I feel like I say that every time. Um, but it's I don't know. It's so it it's really emotional. Um, it makes me very very teary when I see these amazing things. Um, after running a marathon myself, um, I I do understand how people do these amazing things like the ultras and the big swims and, you know, the, the crossing the Simpson Desert. Riding a motorbike on sand isn't easy. Um, so, you know, to do that day in, day out, and I guess these are all conquering, you know, little personal challenges and, and you know, it's, it's a personal growth thing as well. But to do it in support of our little charity that hopefully is changing lives, you know, is is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Kate, um, just getting to the marathon. So um, you've run two marathons, the marathon that you actually ran and then the marathon that you run in the lead up to um, Dolly's Day. But let's talk about the marathon first. Um, tell me about the training and how you got yourself in that headspace and if it was, was it easy or was it hard or? So I guess when we're going through personal stuff or you get to a certain age, I don't know, um, you decide to do crazy things. And, look, I haven't run long distance since I was at school, but I obviously um, got to a, a super low point and, and decided that I needed a challenge. And um, I, 
I said, oh, I was going to run a marathon. And um, look, I couldn't run to my front gate <laughs> at that point in time. Um, so I just, I spoke to a couple of friends and, and there was nothing conventional about it. Obviously, um, you know, I have a full-time job and it's a lot of travel. So um, look, I was, I was fitting in, you know, a run in the morning at three o'clock in the morning with my headlamp on down some station. Right? <laughs> um, and then of course you'd go about your business and you'd be chatting about cows and, you know, talking work stuff and you'd drive to the next station and the, you know, everyone's like, oh, we'll see you at the social club. I'm like, oh, just going to go for a quick jog. So you'd go and get changed and put your headlamp on and run off into the darkness at, you know, some other station. So look, there was nothing conventional about my marathon training at all, but um, a good friend in town who has run several marathons just said to me, you know, after about 30 Ks, it's, it's, it's all in your head. So um, I, I guess I'd backed up my runs enough to know that I was I was pretty good till 25 30 k's and then it was all just a mind game after that so um look there's a there's a lot of healing goes on out there and um you know you you get very very focused and you the life rubbish falls away I guess to a point um it's it's truly incredible and to do it in Central Australia, in the desert, with some of the most amazing scenery that you've ever seen, um, yeah, it's it's something truly unique, and um, and you know, it it probably makes me admire all the people that I've watched over the years that have, you know, climbed mountains and and done, you know, what I think are just the most amazing things, and you know, I'm like, this is what they do it for. This is the feeling they're chasing when they're when they're doing this. So. You know, not only was it to um, sort of kick off some fundraising to start our support line, there was a there was a lot of healing went into that journey as well. I take my hat off to your commitment, like getting up at three o'clock in the morning to run, and then working all day. Um, that's that's huge, and and I know lots of people do that who are training for or whatever, but um, it makes it a huge day. Kate, how how long be, like how long were you in training for um, before the marathon to get yourself to that level of fitness? Was it a year or two years? Or so I started two years out, but there, there should have been a marathon, and obviously we couldn't run that first one in twenty twenty. Oh, so, course. but so I did have a taper off, and and you know just went back to a run every second day or, you know, or, or, or a short run, you know, or five or six Ks every day. Um, but in, in that build-up, I um, had, a, had a light and ride off over sort of October, November, early December, and then started again and, um, and, and built up into, um, what did I run that in, in July, I think. So, you know, started steady in January and then, and then built up into that. So it's, it's a good 16 to 20 weeks out. So, um, but in, in saying that, I had done that previous prep. So, um, that's probably a good thing. Look, there was, um, there was a massive weight loss. There was a massive change in diet. There was, you know, there was, a, there was a, a lot of changes that went into, the, into that final stage of being physically fit enough to, um, to run that. And look, I, I do, I do shrug it off a little bit, but um, you know, you turn up and, and it's like anything. I guess you start to compare yourself, and I'm thinking, oh my god, there's people here that are so fit looking, and you know, this is I'm going to be out here all day. But as long as I cross the finish line, um, and you know, people didn't cope with the heat, and here I am training in in you know Darwin and Catherine. And, um, you know, for a run that's going to be in Alice Springs in July. So it should have been, you know, about three degrees with a top of maybe 17. And I think we started out at about 15 degrees and, and got up into 30 degrees and it was like 40k an hour wind. So um, it was phenomenal weather and a lot of people actually didn't cope and didn't finish. So, um, you know, there's a 
it's a massive personal journey for every single person out there. It's um it's you know it's just an incredible feeling. Yeah. Gosh, you've made me want to go and run a marathon now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well look, pick somewhere beautiful. There's so many beautiful oh. places and um, you know, and I, and look, it was it was a great reminder. I guess, you know, we've always been involved with um, you know, camp drafting and horse sports and you know, if you fall down, that's the family you want to fall down in because, you know, it's truly an extraordinary community and we've seen that time and time again. But to step out and go into another sport, um, it oh, gosh, it was absolutely phenomenal, the support there. And, and you know, I, I met a lady at the training run and she ran the half marathon and she waited at the finish line for me to finish my marathon so I wasn't alone because I... I did do the trip by myself. I had no one with me. So she's like, you don't have a support person? I said, no, I'll be fine. And so she waited three and a half hours for me. <laughs> Lucky she's, if she was waiting for me, she'd probably still be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, oh, you know, it's just, so and, and, and again, I guess it's, you know, that reminder that getting out of your comfort zone and changing what you do is, is you know all part of growth and all you know and there are good people in the world yeah yeah now kate the other marathon is the lead up in and the day dolly's yeah. day and you took meg along with you this year yeah. so i'm really interested to know because i was chatting with you before and i i was exhausted just listening to you before you even started so tell me how that all plays out for you because you leave home and you have to head south and yeah, so every year, I mean, it, it just grows. I I think, you know, we had 40 or 50 registered fundraisers the first year and, and look, we've got a, a dedicated team now. Like there's, I have I have Sal and, and her team, you know, working behind the scenes. So if anyone has rung up and registered in questions, you've probably talked to one of these girls and they do an absolute amazing job. So for the next few months, they'll be they'll be chasing up, you know, the registrations and making sure everyone's right. It's all, you know, everything's done properly. And then we literally start talking about next year. So if for anyone that has run any sort of event, you know that, you know, you take a, a small moment to breathe deeply and then you go, let's do this again. <laughs> but look, it starts... Do It For Dolly Day really starts kicking in early in the year and, you know, we're back to school and we generally have a connection with Smiggle with some back to school kind of kindness message and then we get through that and all the focus is on Do It For Dolly Day. So um, this year we had 540 registered activities, so whether that was workplaces or schools or, you know, registered fundraisers or community, you know, community groups. So 540, 572 actually, we, we grew. So, yeah, that's absolutely phenomenal. So it's, you know, for, for Meg and I, I guess, it, that journey started a few weeks out. Um, we'd both done some media um, and fatigue as well. Um, and just in that lead up, he had a few few things with work pop up and I just said to him, we'll just take some of it off the table, like let's. It makes it hard for you and it makes it hard for me. So let's, you know, let's not put you in a position where you're feeling like you're letting anyone down. Um, in saying that, he was in Western Australia at a set of um, export yards and he was, he had, a, a, you know, an iPad or something set up on, on the dash of his car. I think he did two TV interviews and a couple of radio interviews. So he was doing his own stuff, but but we we you know Meg was the ambassador, and we did ask her to come along and and step up. And for anyone that knows Meg, she doesn't crave the limelight, or um, she's so introverted. But so it was a really big deal to have her. And look, the support, the relief for me to have someone there was absolutely phenomenal. But um, you know, she has her own her own little message in all of this and um you know she 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 did a really good job i think i um i watched her on on the on sunrise and um 
She, yeah, it was, or was it the morning? It was the morning show, wasn't it? There was both. There was the sunrise and the morning show, yeah. Right. Well, I think it must have been the morning show that I saw, sorry. But yeah. um, she did such a great job. She spoke so well and she just looked beautiful and, and oh, gosh, you must have been so proud of her. And No, it was very comforting to have her there and, um, and you know, bring bring her personality to to the whole message as well. And um, you know, she she did say, you know, she people ask why why now? And and she did say, you know, I needed time to heal and I needed time to enjoy what was left of my childhood. And um and I just thought what a what a truly brave message from her to be able to stand up and, and say that, you know, she needed time. Um she knew she she's been there she she knows the effort she's put in in the last four years behind the scenes happily behind the scenes and um you know and and I guess when we're talking about mental health and mental health in a rural space and and young people you know to have someone young and has who has been through a trauma um to say, you know what, I needed time to heal is a really strong message and, and I really hope that, you know, that hits home for someone and if it means they've got to change what they're doing or ask for help or, you know, just just slow down and take that time, I really, I really hope that they get that message. I think um, one outstanding thing about Maggie is that she hasn't lost herself in all of this, has she? And, and um, she's been brave enough to stand up and say, I'm not ready or, you know, I need time. So, gosh, what an incredible young woman she is. We, we have always said when when we get when we get through this, she'll be a powerhouse. So she comes out the other side. She's um, you know, she's she's a very unique girl. She um, you know, she's she just is quietly going about her business and um and and always, you know, striving for, for things to be better. So yeah, look, we're we're so proud of her and so proud of her efforts this year. And I know it's a, a long way out of her comfort zone, but we do appreciate it. Yeah. Um now Kate, I just um I was I saw the other day where you'd been named one of the top 100 most powerful women in the Northern Territory. You've received so many accolades. Um you know, over the past few years, and how is this? How is that going to, you know, help help Dolly's dream? And and how does it just must make Tick and Meg just stand in awe of you? <laughs> oh gosh, I um, I don't know. I don't. I um, honestly, I haven't thought too much about about that award. Um. I I appreciate it and um and I just we don't ever think that we're um you know truly exceptional I think we just keep trying to make the world a better place and um and strive every day to you know bring a little dolly to our world you know somebody that does step out of their comfort zone and and you know d- tries to bring a little sparkle to the room so I guess I guess that's all we're doing, and if, and if that's what you know that recognition was for, then maybe we're doing our job. I think you are, and you've all thrown yourselves into exceptional the three of you. So, thanks, Kate. I know you're really busy, and you've got a busy day ahead. And I really appreciate your time and um, and hearing all about what you've been up to in the past 12 months and um, and how it's all playing out for you. And, um, yeah, I'm very grateful. So, and thank you for everything that you're doing for people all over the country. Oh, thank you for having me. I know this has been ridiculously difficult and, and we've had so many false starts at having this chat and um, and I really do appreciate your patience and um and you're right, it is a bit of a marathon in the lead up to do it for Dolly Day, but gosh, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth uh, it. Yeah. Well, we'll catch up with you again next year, Kate. All right. <laughs> and I look forward to it. Thank you so much. 
Thanks so much for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please try to remember to just click on the subscribe button so we can keep you updated with everything that's happening. Thank you.